Thank you for tuning into our channel of Olo Farm in Mundorongese, Zimbabwe. Thank you to our returning subscribers. Thank you for continuing to support us. And thank you to those who have tuned in today. Please like us, please share, and please leave your comments down below. Anything that you see or that is of interest, please don't hesitate to drop a line. Today we're just going to have a small I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sort of a guide rather, uh, pertaining to goat farming and how we tend to be doing it in Mondorongese, Zimbabwe. We'll just introduce a few breeds that you find on the farm. There are several goat breeds that you can consider at Oman and what we have considered over our farm. These include the Boer goat, the Nubian, and uh, Kalahari, and the savannah. Each breed has its own uh, unique characteristics. So it's important to research and to choose the breeds that best fits your farm's goals and what you're trying to work towards. And also, you also have got to consider your market. And one of the things that we have I mean, uh, particularly considered on Ovalo Farm and which is a good guide is about the housing structures. Housing structures for goats should be designed to provide adequate shelter from the elements as well as protection from predators. The housing should be well ventilated and have enough space for the goats to move around comfortably. You can consider using different types of housing, structures such as open sided sheds, barns and some pens. For us, we have adopted the, mm. the elevated one with the, with the main reason to try and uh, improve the biosecurity in that uh, the, the goat litter can be cleaned from underneath and you don't end up having uh, problems with, uh, especially during the rains. And it's also beneficial, in particular in the rains, uh, to safeguard against food rot. That's one of the things we have also considered. Goats require regular checks and treatments to ensure they remain healthy. This includes regular deworming, vaccinations, and treatments for common diseases such as pneumonia, mastitis, foot rot. There are other diseases that you may find in your local areas it's always important to engage the veterinary service in establishing the sort of medicines that you just need to keep within your, your medicine cupboard. And one of the things in terms of the guide is looking at the, your feed. Goats require a balanced diet that includes hay, fresh grass and grains. You can also supplement their diet with minerals and vitamins. It is important to ensure that goats have access to clean, fresh water at all times. As with any other animals, water is a, is a critical element when it comes to, to goat farming. And in terms of feeds, one of the things that we've adopted in our area is using the locally available shrubs, uh, things like mukpangara. These are tended, I mean, uh, these are particularly preferred by goats. Uh, it's something that we have sort of observed uh, when we take our goats in the local, I mean, the, in the local vegetation. And goats can also need supplements, so you can also consider uh, salt blocks uh, and other minerals that are rich in phosphorus. Um, these are the sort of elements that you always need to be considering when you're looking at uh, goat farming. And the other element that you also need to consider is about safety, the safety of your goats. Uh, it's always important to have uh, a farm or a project where you know that your goats are safe, especially the areas where they breed and make sure that uh, they, it's not open to predators. Uh, things like, uh, depending on when you are in our areas, we've got a prevalence of jackals. So it's always important to have at least some farm dogs which can sort of protect against uh, uh, prey within the, within the farm. 
So for us, it is important to have considered some of these aspects. And you also, when you're doing goat farming, you also be thinking about the own end goal. What are you, what is your pro project aimed for? Marketing your goat's product is an important aspect of running a successful goat farm. You can consider selling your product at local markets, to restaurants and hotels, even considering uh, just opening an online platform so that you can sell your goods and offer services such as delivery. These are sort of things that help you sort of uh, maintain uh, a good uh, customer base, rather. And at Rovalo Farm, one of the things that we pride ourselves in is uh, ensuring that our breeds uh, are sort of uh, are reputable and then there the conditions are, are always good. Uh, we have considered these factors and uh, see to you that it's important for us to be sharing this information. I would like to ask you, if there is anything, which breeds would you think are the most versatile in Zimbabwe? There's always been an argument and there's always been the focus on good boars. But I'm a boar goats rather. And maybe Kalahari. I have not seen a lot of people who are engaging in, in uh, savannah goats. Those savannah goats are well known for their milk production. And milk, uh, from my understanding, I'm a goats, it's becoming a more preferred uh, product. Uh, especially now when people are becoming more conscious of uh, healthy eating. I think there are some advantages that have been cited with respect of uh, having goat milk, uh, especially when you are looking at uh, value addition, making like goat cheese and stuff like that. So there are, these are some of the things that you need to be considering when you're trying to establish a goat farm. And uh, your breeding, you also have got to consider how you are going to do your, your selection for your breed and how you're going to be managing the kids. Uh, for us, we tend to leave the goats on the farm when the other older goats go out foraging. This is a result of prey that we find within our local area, things like jackals. Uh, so for breeds, it's always important to make sure that uh, your goats are getting uh, adequate feeds, your, your kid, the goat kids are getting adequate feed, and that is, uh, this pertains to good quality milk. Um, also, high protein diet some people may consider using things like urea because nitrogen is good for goats because it is con eventually con uh, converted into good protein for goats so these are some of the things that we always need to be considering we are really pleased for you to continue I mean, supporting us and for us we are more about uh, sharing your knowledge and expertise in goat farming with others who have got a similar, sort of similar interest. So that's why we sort of decided to sort of opt up for this video. Um, if you can just, as you leave your comments, please just drop a line, tell, me, tell us where you are operating from and what you have observed within the, I mean, the God area. Because one of the things that tends to happen, especially in Zimbabwe, is that everybody ends up uh, doing the same thing. I think we do have our way of doing things, but then it's always important, again, to be getting expert knowledge, maximize on uh, what's happening within the government in terms of what uh, the Minister of Agriculture is offering uh, in, in particular areas. I've got areas where some pri pri uh, private individuals have decided to go into local collaborations with uh, local farmers, either providing them with... Uh, good breeds so that at least they can improve the quality of their breeds. This is one of the aspects that you find with uh, breeding as well that I've talked about earlier. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for tuning into our channel of Olofa Mondorongezi. We really appreciate your time and uh, we're proud to have uh, subscribers and people who are affiliated to things that we do. Thank you very much.